Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. I just want to make inappropriate jokes, and I don't know what to say without being able to make inappropriate jokes. About what? About this week's episode? Albrecht. Go suck in Albrecht. <laughs> Durr. Albrecht D. Yeah, we're Can talking about... deep throw some one-point perspective? <laughs> 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 we're talking about Albrecht Durr this week. Albrecht great, and his D. Hands. Christina hands. put together a lovely episode. You might know episode. him for his praying she hands, did. but you're going to learn about his dick. Ooh. Yeah, because he did sling some dick. He back did. In the to his Came in pal. some strange... Pen pals. Yeah. But yeah. Check it out. Welcome Here's guys. Albrecht Durr. Cheers. Love this song. Damaged by you. Damaged by me. I'm confused. Confused. We're back again Hi. for another episode. How's oh. everybody doing today? Well, how are you? Mm-hmm. Fucking great. Yeah? Good. Yeah. What'd you do this weekend? I don't even fucking remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We celebrated Reggie's birthday. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Happy birthday. Did you Happy celebrate birthday. it with this fine beer from the North Brewery? Yeah. That has I got a, a label also created by you? Yeah, I... Hold that up to the camera there. Oh, look at that. The Lost Summer hanging out. Mr. McSkull Man drinking on the beach because it was a lost summer. It really was. COVID. Yeah, it's hard to believe the summer's already over. Yeah. Well, the weather doesn't say that, but... The the start of the school year I mean, it's starting to get pretty cold already. I can't fucking wait. Not gonna lie. I hate the heat. Yeah. Cool weather talk. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> good shit. Real people. It was a flakes. Great weekend. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, yeah. let's go around and plug our socials and all that fun stuff. I'm Josh Ruff at joshruff.com on all the things www.joshruff.com. And we're here at Renaissance Studios, uh, Renaissance Studios Tattoo.com and at RS Tattoo and Y on Instagram. Hi, guys. Reggie Cavalier here. You can find me online. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are all at Reggie Inks. And if you have any information that you'd like to ask me, reggieinks at gmail.com for any sort of commissions and or tattoo information. I'm Christina Masler. You can find me at Christina underscore Masler on Instagram, Christina Masler on Facebook, uh, here at Renaissance, um, Crucible Gallery Online. Um, that's, that's my spots. Uh, I'm Bam Masler. Just Google me. <laughs> Bamburnthings.com. Yeah. Bamburnthings. Bamburnthings.com. Crucibleartgallery.com. Fair enough. Just Google it. All right, so who are we talking about today, Christina? Albrecht Durr. Oh, it's nice. this, this fine yeah, dude right this here. Guy. Durr. Durr. Sex. Classic. Drugs. Murder. None of that, because he's a wholesome boy. <laughs> Is he? Oh. He's a wholesome boy. I was getting well, excited for a second. Kinda. I thought we had some fun things to discuss. Yeah. He's a little bit of a dandy. Well, oh, what that. a Sally. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was born in Nuremberg, May 21st. He was, was born. He was born. Cheers. Cheers. Sometimes we remember the drinking game. He was one of three children that survived out of 18. Oh, oh somebody fuck. died, dude. People died. 18, 15, 15, yeah, 15 kids 15 died. people died. I mean, so Chug, yes. yeah. Chug, oh. Chug, yeah, Chug, 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 Chug. So his dad was a goldsmith, and uh, he recognized that Albrecht was very studious, so he sent him to school so he could learn to read and write, and then pulled him out so he can be a goldsmith apprentice which back then was super important because you couldn't leave town without government like permission if you were a goldsmith because of the amount of trade secrets you held. Oh, oh. shit. And you had to be really good at drafting. So Albrecht, of course, was a very good drawer. Loved to draw. Um, at age 13, he did a self-portrait in Silver Point, which was a big deal because it's the oldest surviving child artwork. It's also the oldest surviving portrait from Germany. And silver point you can't erase. So what a fucking show off. I mean, I think how we old have was it. he? Thirteen. 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 He did it by looking in a mirror. Um, do you remember which image it was? I think it was the first one I sent. 
Oh, that that was the. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're a little out of order. They're so. a little out of order. We'll you, take a look at it in a minute. Yeah, uh, third one <clears throat> then it should be. Okay. Yeah. So we'll scope it in a sec. Yeah, but uh, if no one thinks they know Albrechter, you might recognize him from tattoos that people tend to get often. We the most oh, used image ever. Yeah, he did that. Uh, we'll show the actual one before, but these are a bunch of tattoos. Of bottom and in the middle is a nice one. Yeah. God forgive me. Yeah, I mean, clearly. So that, that middle one, though, it, I couldn't even tell it was praying hands because the rosary is so dark. It literally looks like a dude in the middle going, ah. well, I don't think that's the same one as the rest of them, though. No. It looks slightly different, but same idea. Yeah, it's the, the most plagiarized piece of artwork ever. It truly Especially is. in modern tattooing. Yeah, the tattoo community. I know I've tattooed this one at least fucking six <laughs> times. Yep. Like, within the last few years. <laughs> you want to do it on my throat? I'm so, sure it's been done. Yeah. Dead center of the throat? That's a weird That's one a to a make really, look. That's a really shitty spot for that. No, I'll get it on both sides. Make it look like uh, I need both sides. One make hand it, on each side. How about one he's holding dollar <laughs> bills, the other one he's holding like a paper bag 40. Ooh. <laughs> make it look like angel wings at the exact same time. Oh, no. Yeah. And just a dollar sign in the middle. Nice. Please. I've said this before, but if there's... if uh, Like, you got like royalties for images used in tattooing like this he would be banking off this he'd be oh, a billionaire yeah. Yeah, billionaire yeah. So this is definitely the one of the most widely used tattoo images that aren't like you know sailor jerry designs or mm-hmm. something like mm-hmm. that i love that top one that doesn't have the rosary beads it has handcuffs yep judge me only god can judge me <laughs> uh people have taken liberties with shout it, out to whoever did these tattoos yeah <laughs> Uh, Sue, so when I was in my freshman year of college, I morto- mortified of public speaking. So I didn't like talking ever. And first day of art class, they were showing different artworks. And this popped up and they asked who did it. And I figured people would yell. No one else knew it. So it's just me going, I'm right there. No. Okay. Oh, so the hands <laughs> came up. <laughs> yeah. what saying? They were like, yep. Albrecht there. And she just looked ashamed and... Yeah, everyone stared at me. Somebody went... And like the whole <laughs> yeah. class is just looking at you. And, you're and like, I was just like, I'm going to die now. And then she never went back to school again. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, this isn't my first art class before. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, Albert. <laughs> Albert kicked it. I killed him. Poor Bert. I killed it, Gilbert. So uh, his father recognized his passion for art and basically let him apprentice under Michael Wolgmutt. At age 15. Who is this um, guy? He's just another artist. He did a lot of you know, printmaking Mike. as well, which was common around that time in Nuremberg because they had the largest paper mill was in Nuremberg as well as a bunch of metal factories, which made it really easy to do, like, basically book printing there. So what years are we talking about? Uh, this is the 1400s. 14. He was born in 1471. Okay. So add 15 to that. Math. So right around the time of the Renaissance. 1486. There you go. A plus. And right around this time, also, they uh, started printing the Nuremberg Chronicles, which Ooh. was a giant ass book that was supposed to start at the beginning of fucking time and end at 1486. There you go. Whenever it was done being printed. What's in the book, though? Uh, basically, all history from Bible to gotcha. current things in Nuremberg. What's in the book? <laughs> <laughs> Around medieval times, all of the Holy Roman Empire tend to store all of their relics mm-hmm. in Nuremberg. So they were like a super fucking Jesus-y town, too. So <laughs> Super fucking Jesus-y. <laughs> after he completed his apprenticeship, which uh, was in 1490, he went on what was the equivalent of German Rumspringa. <laughs> Except it usually only lasted a short amount of time. It lasted four years for him. So he just fucking. So left. he traveled around you know, Tame and Strange for four years. He was supposed to go to sh- work under um, Sean Gower, which there is a print of his, which is basically who we got most influenced by. Um, I, I don't think I loaded that one up, actually, oh, but I okay. can look it up on here if we need to. Let's just go to. Uh, it's called The Temptation of St. Anthony. Temptation. Why is this not coming up? 
Temptation of... Oh. It's not working. I guess oh, we can look no. it up. We can add it in later. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, put, I'll throw it up there later. But uh, Schongauer died before he got there in 1492. So then Durer traveled for two more years, and they assume he went certain places to work with artists, but no one fucking knows. Well, 1492, just, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, so... So maybe he was <laughs> Is there. that what you remember from school? Yeah. <laughs> did, did he just hop a boat, fly, float around for a while, and yeah. then pop back up? Yeah. Reggie's saying no. But... Just scurvy on a boat? While he was Arr. traveling, the last thing he did before he came back was he brokered his marriage between him and a woman named Agnes. And her dowry was 200. Uh, I called it Dave and Buster Bucks, but I guess <laughs> what they actually were were Florence. Yeah, that's, which, the, that's the currency. In <laughs> yeah, that's actually money. That's not Dave and Buster Italian Bucks. Italian well, currency. <laughs> have you tried using Dave and Buster Bucks? In to Germany? purchase a wife? Yeah. I mean, yeah. they take it. They take it. Well, yeah. technically, she purchased her husband. Y- your dad took it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But in order to uh, win over Agnes, he sent a self-portrait of himself holding a thistle, which is an aphrodisiac and a symbol of love and luck at the time. And it had an inscription about something about, like, fate was up to the stars and heaven. So he was really laying it on thick. So and there's a picture here, but then I, uh, I fixed it. So... Well, oh, those oh. were his protégés at the time. <laughs> 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 yeah. These were his pen pals, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Raphael was eventually, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think these are in order. Mm-hmm. That's his 13 year old portrait in Silver Point. Whoa. Okay, Fucking cool. Show off. So there it is. Um, I mean, the hands are a little disproportionate. I mean, dude, he's how old? 13. 13. Working Thir- in gotta the, knock him the down hardest a medium. Two. Gotta Come knock on, him man. down a peg or two. Come on. 13 fucking years old. It's pretty rad. Yeah, yeah, that's a good deal. All right, it's pretty fucking What's at the top there? Is it's his inscription of being like, hey, I fucking drew this when I was 13 years old. It's like, yo, check old. me out. I'm rad. Maybe he just had tiny hands like Donald Trump. That's true. It's possible. You don't say that about Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> don't insult my man Bert like that. I don't want to trigger anybody. <laughs> I feel triggered. There he is holding his uh, oh, little... Oh, that's him? Throat. I thought it was a chick. No, that's him. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. So, so he sent her a self portrait holding his thistle. Self portrait holding his aphrodisiac thistle, but I fixed it. What a it. dirty boy. Oh, there this? it goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he basically said. Uh, back holding in his the dog. Day. Yo, check out my eggplant. <laughs> Yo, girl, you want. You want some of this eggplant emoji? Look at the little hairs on my chin. I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, when check, I saw this. Check out like, my low cut shirt. But my man hair. Yeah, when I was queuing this up, I totally thought this was some broad. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is Albrecht at age, I think it was like 23 when he painted this. That's hilarious. Just holding his eggplant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he's so, not holding it in like a very sensual way. He's just like, He's hey. just like, here's an eggplant. Hope you likes it. Why do you sound like Dolph Lundgren? Because he's, oh he's German. We're German. trying German accents I, here. Oh, okay. I, I watched okay. a documentary. And every time he, they had his writing, someone would talk like that. Was he one of the, the Dutch little masters? Or no, was that? Uh, this is the Dutch golden age. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, Different. man. Can we remember our own content? What what time period German. was Vermeer active? It was, uh, I think, but a little... After this, maybe after. yeah, after. this is like fifteen yeah. hundreds, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And this is it was post Renaissance. This is like right around the same time as the Italian Renaissance. So not only should you go back and watch our previous episodes, <laughs> yeah, we should too. we should too because we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> so when he came back, he married Agnes. He used that two hundred dollars to buy a house, which oh, had Agnes. a um, yes. studio attached, a working studio. Um, in letters he wrote to his friends, he called Agnes sweet names like Old Crow and Miserable Shrew with a bitter <laughs> tongue. So he was a huge fan of his marriage. Cool. Ah. He fucking loved his wife. I should have um, kept that thistle in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> and at three months of marriage, he, he did, did it all what, for the Florins, yo. Yeah. At three months of marriage, he did what any newlywed would do. He uh, fucked off to Venice for six months without his wife because he needed nice. to study. I mean... Makes sense to me. Honeymoon? <laughs> Honeymoon by himself. Doesn't mean she has to hey. go along. So wait, they were married how long before he took off? Three months. Three months. Three months, Three months. he took off for sex. Like, oh, yeah, I'm tired of this broad. I'm going to go. 
I'm going to go bomb around Italy for a while. <laughs> hey, I know I wrote you a lot of love letters, but yeah. you old crow, I'm taking I really off. just needed them Florence. I, I uh, really wish it. Yeah. Second I guess the idea of ha- signing that hurting for a squirting <laughs> Agnes. <laughs> <laughs> I needed those Dave and Buster coupons to get me to Florence. Basically. So uh, he ended up crossing the Alps to get to Italy. And while he was doing that, he ended up doing these watercolors that were uh, basically the first detailed landscapes of the time, which he did a lot of firsts. He also was the first person to really like brand himself with his name, his initials, the AD. Show it to the but camera. Thanks. You got it on you. Yeah, you oh, do yeah. have it. Oh, yeah. Eh, you can't. Her, her you're, you have it behind the I can't really too. see it right now. It's on. Oh, it's also yeah. like the light brown, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. an AD there. But um, I think I sent a picture of this to you. Nah. There it goes. Whoa, that's watercolor? So that, watercolor? Yeah, that's watercolor. He did it on a moving carriage, and it was also the first time he used watercolor. So, again, fucking show off. Oh, Tight. What a dick. How old was he at this point? 24, I think. He's killing in, it. In the top corner. Travel can... around the Alps just slaying bitches. <laughs> <laughs> well. Maybe, <laughs> maybe bitches. Well. So while he was in Italy, he was enthralled by the different clothing of Italy. So he spent his time uh, watching, watching and practicing drawing. Mostly uh, cleavage and prostitutes that walked by. He liked well, to yeah. Because, you know, his fucking shrewd wife didn't have cleavage, apparently. Well, I mean, what else do you do? I don't know. What else are you going to stare at? Draw titties. Yeah. Come on. He did draw lots of nudes at the time. Even you nudes. spend most of I think your that time. That was a thing back then, though. Just he was the first person to do a anatomy. self-portrait nude, too. Awkward. Fucking Albrecht Durr. But, I mean, even you Killing spend it. most of your time just painting nude bitches. It's true. It's true. But uh, the German ideal was different from the Italian ideal of way people looked. So he. Oh, like, I'm very curious. What was the German ideal? It was a really lanky <laughs> woman. <laughs> Real <laughs> lanky. Blonde hair, blue eyed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, obviously, but still real lanky. Oh, wait, that's like 400 years later. Never mind. Yeah, we'll get into that, too. So uh, he did a lot of copies of Italian master copies because that's how they kind of improved in Italy, and that's how he grew his um, art style. So when he came back to Nuremberg, he kind of carried that with him. But he also he said he was treated like a gentleman in Venice, which he wasn't in Nuremberg, probably because he, you know, Fucked off to Venice after coming home and marrying his wife for three months. That's a different story. But if you pull up, pull up the Wikipedia page, you can see him in his fancy garb. Well, let me try again. I don't know if it's going to work. Oh. There it goes, kind of. Can it? It's no, it's not, not working. Damn. Oh, oh man. Yo, so Google him and look at Wikipedia. Yeah. yeah he, he made sure to make sure that people knew he was a gentleman by painting himself in... Very uh, fancy dresses, fancy clothes <laughs> with fucking gloves. And oh, like yeah, he's definitely styling tassel. in all of his fucking self portraits. Yeah, apparently back then he had really long hair, but he used to wax it and curl it so the nice. curls would stay and maybe nice. dye it. And then he grew his beard out, which was not normal for the time. So he had long, flowing lots locks of long, flowy facial hair. I mean, who hasn't curled their hair at one point? He did it all. Yeah, I haven't. Ever. <laughs> you got a braid. Well, that's not curling. That's different. I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> all right. I've never curled my hair. Yeah. Bullshit. You had a perm. So glow. Oh, I might get a perm now. Oh, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, how much does a perm cost? <laughs> <laughs> You're the girl here. I, you should. You should know. I'm sorry. I, I don't think she's ever had one because no. it's not the fucking 80s anymore. <laughs> and also, my hair is very uh, I want it. tight curls, like a little Jewish boy. I have little Jewish boy hair. If I pull it down, but all I right, I'm going that. to get a. I'm going to go get a perm for next week. All right, all right. What's going on with Bert? Bert, Mr. Durr. Yeah. Bitch. So uh, we didn't really touch on it too much, but. They suspect that the reason that him and his wife didn't get along and possibly why there was no kids involved. Because he's gay. (laughs) Yeah, he had lots of male pen pals. And uh, he wrote to them how much of a bitch she was, but also other things that are questionable. There's not... 
there's not an issue with show me a, your genitals. <laughs> just, just show me your genitals. Genitalia. <laughs> they also did send a self portrait of himself to Raphael that didn't survive. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, who doesn't throw texts to their homies at like 2 a.m. sometimes when they're drunk? Yeah, it sounds like he was sending dick pics to his <laughs> homies yeah. at 3 a.m. when he was drunk, though. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> Yo, this bitch is crazy. Let me suck your dick. <laughs> who's never sent a port or like a selfie of them sitting on the toilet like, at like 4 a.m.? Uh, Except you have to do that in front of a mirror <laughs> Apparently that's for six a thing hours you do often. to sketch. It's happened, Just probably. <laughs> throwing that out there. So... Upon his return with his Dave and Buster Bucks, he actually started off his print shop, but <laughs> he decided in order to become famous, he was going to basically feed upon, upon people's fears at the time, because at the time they were kind of not really having so many relics in Nuremberg. Um, Columbus went to, of course, the New World. And 1492. Came back, yeah, 1492. And came back with stories you know of <laughs> naked people that were savages and eating each other and cannibals. <gasps> so people were fucking thinking the end of times fucking is coming. Metal. I mean, so, he probably wanted to go and paint this, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah, so he decided to self-print his book showing, I think it was 16 plates of the apocalypse. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, this that's, is not it. <laughs> no, those are his prostitutes. Those are the hookers. Oh, the okay. hookers Hi, and their titties. She is not a pretty she, hooker. No, 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 no. She is when are they rough. ever? Do you not remember? Hillary? All right, there but this is go. the apocalypse stuff. Yes. Though. Yeah, four horsemen the horsemen. apocalypse. He was yep. the first person to really do like a metal album cover. Yeah, right I love this piece. He uh, self printed his own book, which was also a first for the time for an artist to print their own book. And of course, it sold like hotcakes because people were terrified and thought this shit was going to come true. Um, separate from this, he also started doing prints of his own artwork of <laughs> woodcuts <laughs> and going to fairs and selling them at tents. It almost so, sounds, it sounds like you're dope. about to be like, and in his free time, he started his solo metal act, Burzum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Burzum. <laughs> Where he killed. To which he wrote, <laughs> produced, and recorded. Killed his bandmates and ate their brains. <laughs> <laughs> but like he ended up being pretty successful at it because no one else had tried that at the time, and it made artwork affordable. It sounds like he was a tattooer just going to conventions and shit. And yeah, but he wares. was like, people look down at it at first because they're like, what the fuck are you doing? See, it didn't, what it didn't, an artist do, and then he made a killing doing it. See, it doesn't sound like that to me. It sounds like more of he was going to like July Fest in downtown Binghamton with all the old ladies with a bunch of doilies, and then he rolls in with all the metal covers. Yeah, so if you've ever gone to a fair and seen uh, Marilyn Monroe holding a Tommy gun, you can oh thank Albrecht Durer. <laughs> 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 See, that's what I imagine. Like here, I story. here we are, like Mar- four got, people got a walk- booth at the fair to sell his wares. <laughs> Marilyn Monroe with a face tattoo. If you can't handle me at my diddliest, you don't deserve me at my doodliest. <laughs> 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 so uh, yeah, he started by doing this. It was a little different for the time. I like that though. Something He's like sweet. more independent than relying yeah. on. Uh, commissions from the church or some shit, yeah. you know? And you can see here, like, I'm just going to draw these fucking metal album covers and scare the fuck out of everybody. And you can see here where he has the AD at the bottom. Yeah. And yeah. that's, that, mm-hmm. that's pretty What's much the name wh- for that. It's like a monogram or something. Yeah. yeah. But it was basically like one of the first artist logos. It, it wasn't even a signature. It was at that point, like a yeah. brand. Schoengauer signed his artwork. So he was the first to do that. But Durr was like the first brand, the first person brand themselves. And um, another thing he also figured out how to do, if you see the clouds in the background, he figured out how to do midtones with woodcuts, which oh. was kind of a new thing yeah, as yeah. well. And that's so just from getting, uh, the the hatching, right? Yeah. Not so cross having just yeah. like lateral, mm-hmm. yeah. unilateral hatching. Various lengths. I mean, so tired as fuck. So he pretty much got a cheer or screw effect with printmaking, which was also pretty cool. I just hear blast beats when I look at this picture. <laughs> 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 Another one after this, which was later on, but still pretty rad, uh, is The Night, Death, and the Devil. Is this the same uh, thing, though, like a woodcut? He did this one, I believe, as an engraving, which he also started to do after that. that, Because you can get... Yeah, it looks a little smoother. Finer detail, and he could get more prints out of it. But... uh, I think I've seen this on a few tarot cards before. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
See, what I absolutely love about Which his, I love it because if you see in the back, like that's him talking and you assume it's the devil because he looks real metal. Yeah. But the devil's in back. He's like that weird deformed goat guy. Yeah. See, what I absolutely love about Durr is as things went on and he established more of his brand, like this one's 1513, it looks like, is that his signature is incorporated into it. Mm-hmm. It's not just some random yeah. print in the corner. Like mm-hmm. it's... It, is incorporated it reminds me the of the, like the engravings in uh, that movie, The Ninth Gate. You yeah, know, where Johnny exactly. Depp's like yeah, looking yeah. for uh-huh. all those to find the open a gate to hell or some shit. Yeah. And, and that's what I appreciate is he, he incorporated it and made it part of the artwork as opposed to just a random little signature in the corners. Yeah, stick it in. Yeah. Another thing he did too with his Apocalypse series, which I don't think you could see it too well in um, The Four Horsemen is he kind of put, like, a really serene landscape and floating right above where clouds are, just fucking demons battling. Nice. This one? You don't really see it too much in there, but in the same series, it's just where basically the bottom would be. It's just, it looked like the background for the Mona Lisa, Mm -hmm. and right above that is just like, hey, this is happening right there, guys. It can happen at any point. It's like right? No. It's just, like, a nice... (laughs) Nice little landscape, and then directly above, there's like hints of clouds, and then just fucking demons. It's like it's an Iron Maiden cover for six, 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 the number of the beast. It's pretty awesome. How guys. you look at the bottom and you realize all the silhouettes are people. Yeah. And the <laughs> devil is catching upon them. <laughs> nerd. He, he technically was pretty much a nerd. Oh, no, I was um, just calling Reggie a nerd. Another one of his engravings that was really popular, I don't think I saved it, but. It was Adam and Eve. It was super mass produced, and you could probably still see it today. Not like Adam and uh, Steve. Adam and That's Eve. That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, you've seen people rip it off quite a few times. But um, because he was a household name now, he was also more prone to forgeries. And there was a guy named Mark Antonio Ramondi who copied everything, including a signature, and Durr was like, fuck you. What a cunt. Fuck and you. brought him to court, and the judge was like, fine, just don't use the AD, because that's his signature. So that was like another first for So he did the same thing and just didn't put his signature on there? What yeah. was the name of this guy? Rimundi. Dude, Mark Antonio The first Rimundi. cunt in art history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but not only that. like, But it was from like wh- Nuremberg to Italy, so that's how far his fucking prints were reaching. But dude, like the names of these people were so much cooler. Is there an image the of that on here? Um, no, I did not save that. Oh. But basically, it looked identical to his prints because the dude just fucking ripped it off. But why in like that that time period were names so much cooler? I think it's because a lot of times they included the town they were they're from. I know, not but in America. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> now true. we got like kids in kindergarten with like there's like thirteen Carls again. Not in America. True. Yeah. That's fair. So uh, he ended up switching back and forth between the more widespread, like, prints to ink, pen and ink, which is where you see the praying hands or adoration. Hands and adoration. There we go. Hands and adoration. So that the right most there. plagiarized tattoo image it is. ever. But he was very um, into. But it's so perfect. So yeah. Well, yeah. So you know, if you draw it from this as opposed to drawing it from another <laughs> tattoo, <laughs> be like, oh, those are Durr's praying hands. Yeah. And go yeah. pull a drawing from that one as opposed to. <laughs> but he had a little bit of OCD, so he would practice a little meticulously. Just do you know what this is like? The original one is—is is it like a pencil drawing, charcoal, it's or something like that? I believe. Yeah, yeah I mean, it is looks it on toned paper? Because that white seems like he. It looks yeah, like it, it, it looks it. like yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Pen and ink, kind of brownish. That's why I was wondering. It looks sweet. Love it. So perfect. That's why people rip that shit off constantly. Yeah. It's a perfect reference for that. So he bounced back and forth between that, which was normally his kind of precursor drawings to paintings. So Where's the handcuffs? Did. Oh, he forgot them. <laughs> he left them at home. He sent them to They called them shackles pals. back then. <laughs> he sent them to one of his pen pals. <laughs> 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 Hold on to those. They'll be, they'll be there next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I ditch Agnes, I'll be over. Agnes. <laughs> oh, poor Agnes. 
Christmas. I'm wet. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the way she sounded. Dude, well, if he was gay, though, do you think she was just, like, smoking hot and that was just his fag hag, pretty much? <laughs> he, oh. he did a sketch for oh. of her after they got married, and she was just like... I mean, like he did refer later. to it. He did refer to her as hag. So yeah, he, hard to remember. Just imagine any woman named Agnes is like smoking. <laughs> like, I think you all picture their old as fuck. Agnes this week, man, that outfit she had on, dude. Woo! I feel Agnes. Like no one. You is, see how short that dress was? I feel like no it one has the ankles. name. Agnes chose to them by the parents. Some like witch or goblin shows up and is like, I curse yeah. your daughter to be named Agnes. And then they grow yeah. up. <laughs> and then they grow up to be that. Oh God. How Poor big Agnes. were her warts? Uh surprisingly he didn't draw her warty, but then again he didn't draw her very much. He uh, drew her one she All the warts were in her hands because she was a toad farmer. <laughs> <laughs> toad farmer. <laughs> That's how she made all that money. Toad farming. I'm just trying to imagine what that profession is like now. I see, <laughs> like, what, do you, what do you need toads for? <laughs> you see like two feet growing out of the ground and you're like, okay, type the hole and then pull the toad out. <laughs> I am so confused. It's like... Are, are they licking them for like fucking to trip balls or what? Like what? What do you need toads for? <laughs> just like that Monty Python shtick where they're just moving mud around. <laughs> oh, I didn't vote for you. <laughs> I mean, people were fucking Morty back then, so who knows? Maybe there was a medicinal purpose for toads back then. <laughs> yeah, oh, so you can shit. trip balls and ignore your ugly wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, oh. Durr was a tiny bit full of himself, but, you know, the dressing and the hair and everything. So one of his most famous paintings came in 1500. Um, it was at the Centennial of Nuremberg, and he painted himself front facing <sighs> and changed his hair to brown so he looked like Jesus. And he was just like, I'm trying to be pious. Where it's also, furs and shit. Yo, check Jesus. out that pimp coat. <laughs> yeah, dude. And he did a lot of uh, print work too, where it was supposed to be like the temptations. So is this uh, like oils? This is oils, yes. And like this, I would suggest if you can look up video of it because it is a gorgeous painting. Dude, I've been. This does not do it justice at all. However, he tried to make himself look like fucking Jesus all the time. I mean, look at those so luscious he did locks. Several, several self portraits then. Yeah, which was rare for the time. He did a lot of them, which is rare for the time. And usually when they did portraits, it was side facing, but he wanted to be front facing like Jesus. Like Salvador Dude, you Mundi. Can see the, Salvador Mundi. See his hands in the praying hands. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's got those long, skinny fingers. <clears throat> see, I'm just and jealous because like, I've been looking for a pimp coat like that for years. 1400s, man. Yeah. You just got to time travel a bit. <laughs> Shit. Might get malaria, but fucking pimp coat, man. Yeah, I can beat it. You can beat it? Yeah. It's the scurvy that might do me in. It's true. You do have an issue where I think scurvy's going to So did you paint this in 1500? Yep, it was 1500 for like a giant celebration they were having in Nuremberg. And he uh, unveiled it. <laughs> me! <laughs> <Basically>. Come <laughs> look Happy New Year's to me! <laughs> Come look, look, everyone, it's me! It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, he loves... Come see how good I look! <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also pious. <laughs> Come see me! So, uh, Check out my pimp coat. He basically continued to do this. He was commissioned for quite a bit of artwork because like I said he was being coming more of a household name because of all the print work I took a lot out of this because this dude never fucking stopped working probably to avoid Agnes but <laughs> <laughs> it was always doing something I mean with but a name like Agnes, Agnes. Uh, well you said he had like 18 kids but only three that lived right no he was one of 18 kids oh okay that's right three lived he didn't that have any sense. kids because because a gay yeah <laughs> ouch oh are we out of thistle I'm just not in the mood <laughs> oh, I'm sorry my eggplants you not- have to go back to the toad farm I heard they're getting really out of hand this time of year <laughs> my eggplants not purple enough <laughs> oh 
what time is it? I got to go to Italy again. Yo. Which he went to Italy My boy, again. I mean, Raphael called. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, my boy Carl needs me to come over. Uh, so he did take a trip to Italy again from 1506 to 1507. I don't know if Agnes went with him, but I'm going to guess fucking no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is where he mostly focused on his painting work. And uh, upon his return, he kept communicating with Raphael, and that's where he you sent gave a focused a very hard off. That focused, fucked. This focused. is where he fucked. He fucked a lot of dudes. Maybe um, he. <laughs> that's okay. We're not being homophobic. Yeah, no, we're not. you can do that. It's cool. He was a great <laughs> guy. He's was probably man. into dudes. Um, so he started. I mean, what what pals. Renaissance dude wasn't at that point? I don't know. Maybe I like S and D's. Maybe I like getting my DS. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> what, I mean. what creative dude in the 1500s wasn't checking out some other dudes? That's true. They did have a lot of boys on hand. House boys. Oh, House that boys. just got no, creepy. I, I'm not saying they were underage. I'm just saying that that's what they called their their men that helped around the house. House boys. It's, you know, went to a creepy place. Sounds very Epstein. Oh, that's it's how we got Agnes to be cool with staying home. <laughs> Agnes, I hired you, house boy. He I can got help you. on the toad yeah. farm. I got the house boys. And he's he's Agnes when he's not he around to keep right at satisfied. the foot of your bed. I, I got you a pool boy and a tennis coach. <laughs> and Personal trainer. <laughs> I'm just going to write to my pen pals again. Stay out of the office. Thanks. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so uh, he sent apparently a self-portrait of himself, of course, because he likes doing that to Raphael. But it was done it's on like a transparent, <laughs> transparent paper. So when you held it up to light, you could see it, which Dude. makes me think since it didn't survive, there were some other things on that fucking transparency that only Raphael was. My God. Or <laughs> Raphael was just drunk and held up to a candle and fucking <laughs> caught it on <laughs> fire. Oh, who <laughs> dare send me? Oh, oh, oh fuck. <laughs> I think I'm going to take a page out of his book and just become a creepier dude <laughs> who just paints self-portraits and mails <laughs> it to it random to your people. Idols? No, just random people. Like, just look up Joe Smith in Missouri and just <laughs> mail it to him. Be like, this is what I look like. What do you look like? Invisible dick pics. <laughs> Hold this up to the light on the 13th of November. <laughs> Get some mystical quest. Friday, the, Friday the 13th <gasps> of November. <laughs> is this just a dick with a halo on it? <laughs> Dearer. It's my glorious golden god. <laughs> I will could say, though, imagine? this painting is pretty fucking impressive. Yeah. Yeah. But could you imagine okay. if he was sending people dick pics, the amount of detail in those pubes? I mean, he was he what? He probably like, waxed and curled them, too, if we're going to I mean, be this is 1,500? Is that what it says? Yeah. He mm -hmm. So, he, what, 24? This was around the time of the Mona Lisa. 25, I think. Around that. What year was we born? 1471? 1471. So, 29. Okay. <laughs> Math. Um, so, when he came back is when he did The Night, Death, and the Devil, which we saw before. He also did Melancholia, which he... Did it was a depiction of an angel and a cherub, and there's all these puzzles around. Is that on here? <coughs> yes. Oh, well, what's this just, thing? That's just a Jesus. He did a lot of that's different parts. Jesus. So I just oh, that's just Jesus. Ones. That's just Jesus. Ah, Jesus Christ. But um, he said melancholy was the curiosity and pursuit of beauty that leads an artist to doom. That one. This one. Yeah. Oh. So and he was obsessed with being melancholy. He was OG emo boy. <laughs> well, I mean, he was married to a chick named Agnes who wasn't a dude and wanted it to be a dude. It's I mean, true. So that might have been his melancholy, not, you know, the quest for beauty and science and shit. <laughs> I'm waiting back to the hear quest from Raphael. For dick. Like, you know, I sent off that dick pic like three weeks ago. <laughs> he didn't text me <laughs> back. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I've been see, it's been unseen for like months. <laughs> it's been three years. I didn't get return receipt. <laughs> <laughs> USPS hasn't told me it's been delivered. <laughs> I put signature request. <laughs> so this is another engraving though? Yeah, it's another engraving. But you can see there's just like puzzles and shit and just an uncut piece of stone that should be a statue. Uh huh. And just that angel just fucking over it. Just Looks uh, like that cherub's over it too. Dude, yeah. what's with the weird like animal that's I'm on death's that door? Like I'm pretty dog. sure that's a sad dog. I couldn't tell it was a dog or a cow. Yeah, just, I thought it was a cow when I first dead. looked at it. 
It has an oddly muscular neck, but I feel like in the face I see a dog. Yeah. But I feel like he had reference for this, because if you look up his rhinoceros, which I didn't save, which was from accounts of what a rhino should look like, it's fucking hilarious. He's just kind of guessing what it looks (laughs) like. (laughs) It looks like it's wearing armor, and it's amazing. Well, that, but that also brings up the question of, because there's so many animals during this time period that looks nothing like what we see now. So maybe that's what dogs Well, they just like. didn't know what they look like. They would just well, probably hear stuff about them and well, uh, hey, uh, or, use their imagination. Or have they really changed that much? I mean, it's... What, the animals? Yeah. No, in, I, I, in 500 years, <laughs> have they adapted to have look more... Have you seen more, those sad-ass cats? That's what I mean. With the well, human yeah. faces that are like... <laughs> well, because that's, cats are one thing, though, because they're everywhere, right? But, but like a rhinoceros, I can see why you wouldn't yeah, know what that looks like unless you saw it somewhere. But there's so many artists that probably never would have communicated or never would have seen each other's work that I feel like painted very similar animals in that time period. I think they were all influenced by each other, though, because, like, he went to Italy. So well, bam, start researching it and write that episode. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll why forget, animals I'll forget about fucked it. up. Yeah. Part one. Why your dog fucked? <laughs> 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 Who fucked your dog? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good Google search. Should have been any number of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Who fucked the dog? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't Google that. I'm on so many lists. <laughs> but, yeah, I like... I see why things would look so fucked up just because you couldn't pull shit up on Google and see what something yeah. looks like back then, you know? Yeah, you yeah. couldn't you couldn't tattoo the same line you just had to play 400 like times. No, you couldn't do that. Or bring hands or eight or thousand times. times. Or the bear. Eight million times. The bear. Probably. But yeah, get a chance, look up the rhino. If you want to look through this book while I chalk, you could probably find the rhino in here. Got this <sighs> lovely book for six dollars. Six the world of dollars. Dollar. What I've definitely doing? spent six dollars on worse. It's true. So um, he spent most of the teens, fifteens, just doing his thing. He ended up um, getting commissioned and quite often, actually, by Maximilian, <clears throat> the emperor. Yes, the emperor. Good old Max. So in 1520 to 1521, he traveled to the Netherlands to sell prints and um, hand over a commission he did of Maximilian's daughter. Which she didn't like. The prince didn't sell, so it wasn't really a profitable trip. Um, he did, however, go to Brussels where he painted the king. He was commissioned. So there he kind of came in contact with relics from the Incas and was totally fucking enamored by it. And that's where the rhino came from. <coughs> Dude, these pictures are so metal. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, man, these are brutal. While he was there, he grew his cabinet of curiosities. He collected um, Dude, weapons out. from the West Indies, horns, fish fins, and just sent all that shit back. So he was a hoarder? He was a hoarder of curiosity things, which is Us. a man after Sounds my like own you. heart. Yeah. <laughs> but on his way back in 1521, he got sick with probably malaria. Uh. So instead of dying, it just slowed him down. So he wasn't doing <laughs> as He much. just got a little tired. He just got a little tired. <laughs> And then he uh, died in 1528, probably from complications from the malaria that he had for seven years. Oh, he died. He died. He died. He died. But Albrecht Dizzle. <clears throat> he didn't have any kids, but his fortune. Remember how he started out with the 200 Florence and was just like, Buku Dave and Buster Bucks. I can get a whole house <laughs> and a prince. He studio. turned it into 198. 6,876 Florence. Tight. Which is a fucking lot of money. No Sweet. kids to give it to, just Agnes. More than I got. And her fucking cool boys. Agnes. So, um, the Re-invested stuff. Reinvested in the toad farm. <laughs> 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 so, a short list of things he did. He was the first person to pioneer self portraits, um, including his nude self portrait. It's out there. If people want to look at it. Why don't um, we see this? You want to see this? Where is it? The internet, uh-huh. where lots of nudes live. Yo, let me see that Albert guy nude. Albert nude. Um, I'm sure a lot of those exist somewhere. But there's only one in a museum. But I'm sure he sent them out. Um, They're all in Raphael's <laughs> closet unopened. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, shit. I got another fan letter again. <laughs> Damn it. It's probably got another dick pic. <sighs> 
So he was the first person to really brand himself. He was also self-made by publishing. Um, <clears throat> in the late 1800s, I think the last picture I have here, they decided to erect... Well, this is just prints. I just included prints of different shit he did. Sweet. So many religious prints. Prince, like the singer? <clears throat> yeah, Prince. Purple oh, Rain. Steve Gutenberg. Yeah. He, w- he made lots of his success because of uh, moving type. Thank you, Johannes Gutenberg. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I love that guy. Yeah, he's great. Moving type. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Steven I love Johannes how you just threw Gutenberg. that in here. <laughs> yeah, got to throw some love for Johannes. All right, was this he another also, print? So this was actually a watercolor he did. What, why did you call him? Uh, why why you put up a picture of Steve? Johannes Gutenberg. Johannes Gutenberg. Invented moving the print. moving type. Yeah. Well, also another right there. college See story. Uh, we had that as a bonus question on a test, and I couldn't remember Johannes Gutenberg's name, so I named like every movie Steve Gutenberg was in and <laughs> said they had the same last name. I did not get those bonus points on that test. Because you forgot. Yeah. What was the movie circuit. that you listed? Uh, Three Men and a Little Baby. <laughs> Police Academy. Police Academy. <laughs> Police, Police Academy 2. <laughs> it Takes Two Police with Academy Christy five. Alley. <laughs> uh, the guy who uh, shaves <laughs> James the Short same Short Circuit. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I with the goth girl from yeah. 16 Candles. Wait, he was yeah. in Alley Sheedy. Yeah. He was in Short I circuit. forgot he was in Short He circuit. was the one, oh, though. He's a <clears throat> dude, he's way cooler than I remember. Yeah, so Steve Gutenberg. Johannes Gutenberg's great, 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 great grandson, maybe? We don't know. I didn't research that. Uh, so is this a, another it. print? That is another Whoa. painting. He did a lot of uh, scientific, almost watercolors at one point in his life. where Kind of like something you'd see in like an Autobahn book kind of thing. Yeah. So people didn't know why because no one really did that back then. No one would sit there and just draw the tiniest detail on either a hair or the one before that, which was just fucking weeds. They were weeds. It was called turf. Just hanging out by the swamp, yep. getting away from Agnes. Still <laughs> working. Hiding, air pain. claiming to go pull some frogs or toads or whatever. <laughs> and he's just sitting there painting. But yeah, he did a lot of different shit. Experimented with a shit ton of mediums. He apparently also wrote really bad poetry, but no one talks about it because it was fucking bad. But um, in his... I think it was 300 years after he died or some shit. Um, they erected that in Nuremberg statue to honor him because cool. he was like a fucking god there. So World War II happened and fucking Hitler ruined everything. So because, you know, he was blonde haired, blue eyed and so talented, <laughs> the nationalists started taking prints and just putting like swastikas in them oh. or oh. photoshopping. Oh, fuck. Hitler's face over it. And then Hitler oh. started using Nuremberg and all of his propaganda films as like his home base. Damn. So oh. the Allies came. Is that why they had the, the like the war trials there? Yep. The oh. Allies came and bombed the shit out of Nuremberg. Piss. Basically rubble. That is the only thing that survived was his fucking statue, which made him even more of a god. Fuck yeah. To be fair, didn't the Nazis bomb the shit out of a few like French museums? Oh yeah, yeah. they bombed the like, shit out of a lot of. We places. lost that's, a lot of fucking like that's, fossils but and that's old, also that's old, coming almost later complete too. dinosaurs yeah. got fucking just bombed and there's, but this there's is episodes coming about that. Why we have such extensive artwork from Durer that survived was because Hitler stole it and protected it because it was his fucking ideal. And he could use it to so, try to further his Aryan race. Was that another image. thing that was in the monuments, man? <clears throat> um, it probably was. It included, wasn't in the movie, but, but yeah. That's one of the ones that survived because he fucking stole So did away. all the Durer prints end up in Italy after Hitler killed himself? Along with that whole conspiracy that Nazi gold ended up underneath the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's possible. His, there's still woodblocks that survived of his that are out there. Yeah, you you can actually find them now and purchase them for like $20,000. And yep. for anybody that wants to look up more of his stuff, like this book that Bam's <laughs> looking at right now, there is so many pieces of art in there that we yeah. didn't show on here. But also, uh, they thought of him as so much of a god back when he died. They exhumed his body and made a death mask and then a cast of his hands. And then those disappeared. 
Which I feel like someone did some freaky ass shit with those casts of his hands. That's awesome. So they dug him up and made a death mass of his decomposing corpse. Of his decomposing corpse, and then that shit disappeared. Fucking metal, bro! (laughs) Yeah! Wow! So Albert Durer was not only an art nerd, but probably the most metal dude from the 1400s. Yeah, I would say so. True or false me on this one. I remember talking about Durer because of Art History 1, pre-Renaissance. He actually had a lot to do with us figuring out uh, one-point perspective? Yeah, he okay. went to Italy, and he figured out perspective while he was there. Because he drew a grid on a plate of glass, and he figured out that the grid that he drew on the glass was corresponding with the buildings yep. and all yep. that stuff, so... Yep, like, all the stuff we point out in the Byzantine era, how, like, the floor tiles go up to the girls' tits, and then, like, all the chandeliers are pointing in a completely different plane of perspective. That's because he didn't figure that shit out yet and make yeah. it kind of... All right, cool. Honestly, he modeled himself a lot after Jesus, but he was kind of the Jesus of artwork back in the day. He figured a lot of shit out. One point perspective completely changes the game because then you figure out how everything sort of sits in space without just it like, oh, that's where... That's where a drunk dog goes. <laughs> <laughs> we go back to uh, the previous episode. Rock me, rock me, rock me, sexy Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that that was actually just about Albrecht Durer. Yeah, I mean... He was the uh, sexy Jesus of the 1400s of art. Cool. I mean, look at that self-portrait we showed earlier. Yeah. Check out that dick pic. <laughs> the one thing that did survive... <laughs> so if he was pic. sending out dick pics, they were in perfect perspective. They were. That's why I said, can Ooh. you imagine the detail? Pretty accurate, you know? Yeah. Pretty accurate dong shots. Wow, He's that's a nice vein. People. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a three-quarter shot of my seven-inch dong. <laughs> <laughs> I just permed my pubes today. They smell like lavender and thistle. Let me find the vanishing <laughs> point on this one. <laughs> 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 the vanishing point's gonna be your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Art jokes. I love it. <laughs> oh, oh, One God. thing that did survive when they dug him up, they cut off a piece of his fucking hair, and you can go to a museum and just be like, Yikes. Yep, that's his fucking blonde hair. The I hair the of the up. Art Jesus. I, yeah. I don't want to see his hair. <laughs> Hair or pubes? I kind of want to see like the fucking cast they made of his hands. They don't exist. Some oh, some swiped creeper them. fuck swiped those and did some unspeakable things with it. Is my guess. Oh man. Yeah. So Damn. Weird shit happened back in the 1400s. Rock me, rock me, rock me, sexy Albrecht. <laughs> Albrecht. But overall, he was pretty wholesome boy. Yeah. Except for talking shit about his I mean, wife. besides fucking taking off on his wife of three months <laughs> to go fucking bang dudes in Florence for <laughs> however long. He that's a multiple times. times. That's a power yeah, move. Yes. That is a power move. I don't, he was very uh, into those titties, too, in Florence. So I'm thinking he might have done a little bit of both. Column yeah. A, column B. Figure out what you like. Yeah. Try it all. He liked Italy. Some group stuff. Some shower stuff. It was you think they had showers back then? <laughs> Golden showers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it rained. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> Shower and <laughs> rain monopoly. Raining machines. gave him buster bucks. I mean, he did Throwing have those florins. 200 florins. Pretty huh. sure Italy accepts Dave and buster bucks. I wonder what the exchange rate on 200 florins would be now. Like if you were to, you know... One Figured billion for, dollars <laughs> for in, <laughs> for inflation over you know eighty six five hundred I fucking mean, years eighty six Chuck E Cheese coins. Look at the fucking house that he was able to buy for that. That's a lot of fucking money. Yeah. Well, mad respect to him for you know pushing his own shit. Yeah. Back in the day, he, he created. Really it. Most hustle. people were like working for the church, you know. Doing he created yeah, a brand. Oh man, oh, man. Mm-hmm. yeah. And like a lot of artists back then would draw themselves in lavish clothing, but were poor as fuck. He had the lavish clothing and afforded the lavish clothing and hung out in the lavish By clothing. sewing his shit. So, clank, 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 clank. So he did a lot of oil paintings, too. Like, that's what I was looking oh, at yeah. in the he book and stuff. Ton. Yeah, we so, didn't look at a lot of those today. Just that Yeah, mostly the prints, but the... Very, so these oil pa- oil paintings, was he selling those as well? or He was getting commissioned for them, mostly. Okay. Yeah. So he was getting commissioned for the oil paintings, and then it was kind of a shot in the dark of what he thought would sell for prints. So he would just get a shit ton of prints and then sell, have Agnes go and sell them. 
because wow. she needs to earn her putting keep. Putting the wife to work. <laughs> hey, you could totally take 10% and hire a new pool boy. <laughs> Someone Tennis to help coach. you with those toads. Strong hand on the toad farm. <laughs> Did you say toads or toes? Yes. Okay. Both. All of the above. <laughs> Foot job. Mm. Cool. So well, yeah, that, that's, so that's, that's very, very uh, like modern day thing. Like for yeah. artists to do is to like sell prints of their work at conventions or yeah. fucking fairs yeah, say or like whatever. It, you you know? just print a book. Like ah, this is the apocalypse to me. I'm gonna just like draw that book. Yeah, it's dope. Gave Da Vinci, which was around the same time, the credit of being like a fucking Renaissance man, but he was too. And I feel like he did all this shit ton yeah. more than Da Vinci. Well, did. I think Da Vinci like originated the term Renaissance man, just not because of his artwork, but because of like all the, the inventions science. and stuff yeah. that he did. How too. many different yeah trades he, he had his hand in? Yeah. yeah, I mean, when I when I think of him, I think more of like a scientist who could produce artwork. Yeah, you know. Yeah. When I think of this guy, I think of a guy who was an artist but who he, learned how to brand himself, learned how to. But market. he also did yeah. take a scientific approach to shit and mathematics when he figured out perspective. Like his stuff became yeah. way more mathematical. Yeah, yeah it's that. true. It's still never left that venue though. Is yeah. more just still artwork. Yeah. Right. It was just a he, he architecturally understood how to draw something. Yeah, like Da Vinci made like flying fucking, machines. Yeah, and flying machines and like catapults and stuff like that. Yeah. Just drafted yeah. like designs for that kind of stuff. And that's maybe what I mean it was when booby I, traps to keep Albert Durr from sending him to. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, there's this dude and down there in Germany, keep sending me dick pics. Get draw away. like a motherfucker, but I'll send you a dick. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice dick drawing, but fuck, man. Still got some weird pubes to it. They were just some Looney Tune type pubes. fucking booby traps that he had set for Albrecht. So knowing that you uh, might have gotten a dick pic once or twice, uh, what do you guys think? Like, hang out, drink? Jerry sounds fun as fuck to party I would with. do Honestly. all things with him. Drugs, Whoa. Drink. I'm yeah, I'd kiss him cool on the mouth. Out. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Dude, she's got his signature yeah, on her hand. I so. know. It's Al, do you like ladies tonight? Okay. <laughs> I, Dude, you don't no, have to tell me. No, it's more like, do you guys want to get your hair done together? That'd be nice. Dude, you don't have to tell get me. If, if he rolled into town right now, she'd leave me for him. I know. I mean, I get a lot of Dave and Buster bucks out of it, so. And a lot of dick pics. That means you could, like, go bowling and buy yourself a picture <laughs> while you teach a lady. Dude, you might be able to get two, two pictures and maybe even a hot dog. To yeah, Durr. Durr. Well, I'm totally Lizzie. party with Durr. Yeah, I'd party with him. Yeah. You got to kind of, like, keep your gaydar up, yeah. though, you know? He'd get you a little yeah. drunk and be like, wouldn't it be fun if we painted each other naked? Hmm? <laughs> That's when you're like, ah, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, worse things have happened. Oh, yeah, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you were having a flashback there. Do I no. want to tell? No. Okay. Reggie's the one talking about kissing him on the mouth. He's a pretty man. <laughs> he is a very pretty man. I mean, you saw that picture of him when he just, just had a couple just hairs. I thought, the, I, I thought it was a chick. <laughs> just ignore the beard. and It's probably very soft. It probably feels nice. Probably yeah, he looks like a well manicured person. He so. probably smells like lavender. He probably invented conditioner <laughs> just for <laughs> his <laughs> cubes. He probably smells like lavender and honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, conditioner by Durr. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe it's Durr. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's his thistle eggplant. Yeah. That was OG dick pic, man. Not even dick pic. It was more of a dick emoji. <laughs> Just eggplant like, hey. You in the mood? You want to hang? <laughs> you want to hang? A year. Yeah. <laughs> and then he did none of those things with her. I wish I could find, like, it might be in that book, hand it over. The picture he drew of Agnes was just so fucking half-assed and bored. She looks so bored. She's just fugly. It looked like he didn't even put the effort of making her look fugly. How can you, draw these, how can you draw these girls in Italy? What you won't draw me. Oh, that's not even complete. That's <laughs> like a line drawing, <laughs> no. like a contour it drawing. It was so half-assed. That's Dude, weird. I've I've done pictures. I've done drawings yeah. on post-it notes that were more detailed. Yeah, that that was as long as he could stare at his wife for. 
to oh, do that. Oh, honey, look, I drew the fold in your clothes really nice. Bye. <laughs> Here. I drew your folds really nice. Right next to this fucking brilliant painting of him. <laughs> yeah. As a chick. Yeah. yeah. As and a chick. It's just like, now get off my ass about fucking painting you. I'm going to Italy. Bye. 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 <laughs> but yeah, if anyone gets a chance, please just look up Albrecht Dürer. The amount of fucking woodcuts that you'll find is ridiculous. Well, and I if, mean, there's like a bajillion oil paintings, too, that yeah. we didn't even look yeah. at today. And are, I mean, if you're really feeling lazy about it, just look up some tattoos. You'll see. You'll see a bunch of praying yeah. hands, and it's yeah. from him. He was the guy. The guy that did it. He's that guy. He would be owed so many florins right now. He would. Royalties. He would. Yeah. He'd own his own Dave and Buster's chain. <laughs> what about Chuck E. Cheese? Praying Hands mm. LLC. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he'd own a Chuck E. Cheese too. He might. Yeah. He he seems like the guy who'd hang out with the rat and eat some pizza. He'd own Vidal Sassoon, Brandon. What? Vidal Sassoon. Hair stuff. Hair stuff. Oh. Uh. That's cool. why we'd hang. <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah. Well, on that note, let's call it an episode, guys. Clang. Tell Brector. Dur. I would drink, party, and do drugs with. Just not send dick pics. And Bam would bang him, too. All right, bye. Bye. (laughs) Fuck you, guys.